I wanted to do my own brand. I wanted to do, have my own business. I don't know, I, you know, I'm a surfer and then I, I got those skills to shape and I knew a lot of the good surfers of the era back then. Um, I just had the confidence. Uh, I had the confidence to just leave and, and, and do it. Yeah. Um, back then, I do recall, I was told that I would never, you know, be successful. Like, the big boys were the, you know, the, the El Merricks and the Darren Hanleys, like they were the guys and who are you? And, and the more that they told me I couldn't do something, um, the more that I was gonna do it. Luke Egan had just been in a world title race with Andy Irons. He was number two in the world and he walked into my factory uh, because I, I'd been making boards for Dean Morrison and Dean Morrison was a young guy who was trying to qualify. Um, and so, you know, he was going through the qualification process and you don't know whether he's gonna make it or not. Luke Egan's number two in the world and walks into my factory and goes, I've just left DHD and I want you to make my boards. And I was like, a bit scared, um, intimidated by that because, you know, you have, you know, one of the top athletes in the world all of a sudden coming to you going, let's make some boards. And that was a defining moment. Yeah, that, that set me on, uh, scared me, but at the same time, it was my opportunity. Um, if I was ever going to be successful, I needed to make boards for the best surfers in the world. And, and that's what started it. The tractor logo, uh, I didn't want to use my name. I, I, I just felt, you know, Al Merricks, Dale Bergs, Darren Hanleys, there was always, you know, those, that, they, they always put their name on the surfboard. And, and I'm, I'm a pretty private person. Um, I'd grown up around machinery. My, old, my dad had worked in the mines and, and uh, owned machinery and stuff like that. So it was just something that uh, probably was in my DNA um, to be, because uh, North Stradbroke Island was a, a sand mining, uh, that's, that was its industry. And I just grew up around it. So um, my wife and I went hunt, looking around for what it was going to be my logo. And I found, I come across uh, Caterpillar who makes machinery. They had all these toys in this toy store and I bought all these toys. Um, and, I, and Renee and I were taking photos and stuff. And, and the logo that you see today was the one that I chose. You can be a great shaper. Um, and still fail in business. Um, I've been very lucky to surround myself with some clever people. I, I was not a business guy. I didn't go to you know, study you know, business or do anything like that. But I just have intuition and instinct and, and I think that's been uh, running a business, having good people around you, as well as obviously I can shape. Um, I've had really great athletes, probably the best athletes in the world, riding my boards. Andy Irons, Bruce Irons, Luke Egan's, Ockies, Sonny Garcia's, you know, they've, I've, all, I've had the best of the best come to me. I've been able to make their boards and that's made me successful. I surf, I love surfing, I surf a lot. And a lot of the equipment that I make for these guys, I make them for myself and I, I'll say this, only a surfer knows the feeling and that rings true because when I ride a surfboard and it feels great to me, I then pass it on. They then stamp their, you know, this, is, this works. So that's helped me be successful. Some of the challenges now are there's a lot of people, a lot of, there's a lot of shapers in the world. Um, there's a lot of good shapers in the world and there's new technologies that are, are moving forward and you've just got to be engaged you know you have to be involved in it and and I think you know me being a surfer um, being involved with the best athletes in the world and, and just keeping my finger on the pulse is just keeping me uh, it's it's interesting I'm interested I'm still interested it's JS Industries 20th year this year um, and I was shaped for five years for DHC before that so it's been 25 years I've been doing this for 
um, and I'm still excited. I mean, look where I am. <laughs> Having the technology that there is now, it allows me to reproduce really consistently good boards. But at the start, I had to be a mechanic, an engineer. I needed to not understand the software, you know, understanding the relationship and stuff. It, it took a while and not everyone, you know, there's a lot of shapers out there, they don't even know how to use a computer for one. And, and I don't think they even understand, but um, you know, a lot, uh, yeah, there's a lot of shapers that aren't designed, but I, I design everything, I own all my own machines, um, I've helped design and build these machines. Um, I reckon that's a lot to do with my success, you know, and, and, and especially to supply the world, you know, with quality surfboards. Yeah, it's, the technology has been a big part of that success. You know, the thruster is probably still going to be the main staple board into the future, but there, if you looked at social media, there's a lot of comments coming out about why isn't Joel Parkinson, why isn't Joel Parkinson still on tour riding a twin fin at certain breaks? And, and even, and it's not just Joel, like Kelly was riding a twin fin, I believe, in Karamas, and they're like, why didn't you ride that in the event? Because these guys, you know, we know how to make twin fins better than back in those days. Than in those days, so the twin fin of today is actually a really high performance surfboard, and it won't. Athletes are pretty scared to change, so they're always going to ride the three fin. Um, but you know, you see the quad being ridden in in Chopu and and Pipe, and whether there'll be ever a twin fin. Like J Bay is probably the best. J Bay is probably the best wave in the world for a twin fin. Whether an athlete will take that chance, I doubt it. Let's just say surfing in general has expanded its mind. Uh, even as a shaper, I, you know, I make performance surfboards. I, I look at it now as like a car company. Like there's Ferraris or Formula Ones and that, but those car companies then build basic model cars for the average person to drive on the road. I make the Formula One of surfboards um, for the elite athletes, but I also make a lot of models that are just for the general surfer. Um, because I want someone who walks in and buys a JS, regardless of how um, good they are, to have a, have a, have a good time. Um, and I think surfers, the, the average surfer is smarter these days, and I think he recognises that what Julian Wilson rides or, or Joel Parkinson rides, he's kind of not, you know, he's not at that level. Um, but he does know that the brand makes us, our brands make really good boards for average surfers. The PU surfboard has been since the 60s and designs have evolved and to suit the athletes, the athletes dictate design I guess in that sense, and PU surfboards are still an amazing performing surfboard. Epoxy is evolving. Epoxy, you know, we our style of making what our hi-fi boards are made very different to other people's style of EPS and epoxies, and and I think that we, you know, the manufacturers and and the brands are just are getting better and better at making it. So. I think certain certain waves, epoxies really suit. We're going to see wave more more wave pools turn up. Um, that water, it's fresh water, it's different buoyancies, and and you're going to start seeing a different type of surfer. I mean, we know we just heard that China has now got five wave pools being built, um, and you know, and these wave pools, but it's not just China, like a lot of countries are now developing wave pools and new technology. So EPS boards, are, it's gonna change and it's gonna be a big part of the market. But when it comes to the ocean and it comes to the kind of conditions that um, we, you know, the good waves or, or a lot of the, it's still PU. Say my brand, I've developed I like I've been working in with PU, um, best athletes in the world, best waves in the world, 
worst waves in the world as well in PU, but now wave pools with the consistency um, and the, all the different types of wave pools, it's really interesting time. It's really exciting. I wish they'd build more wave pools because the more people that surf in wave pools means there's less people out there in the ocean, which means we're gonna get more waves, <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna help. I mean, surfing is so popular. Um, I, even here in Portugal and Ericeira, right, I was looking at 50 kids on that beach there and then 50 kids at that. It, it's just amazing. But that comes with some sacrifice, you know, there's crowding and it's great for a business, it's not great for this as a surfer, <laughs> you know. But so yeah, um, wave pools are really going to change change the sport. I mean, you look, you look, you've got the Olympics um, next year, and it's going to be in the ocean. I kind of wished it was in a wave pool because it it would be um, it would be exciting, you know. You like you looked at you look at Kelly's that event at in Kelly's wave pool and and you look at stuff, uh, the surfing that's being done in Texas in the Waco stuff and, and it's, it's exciting and, and it's a, a level play, it's like tennis. Um, it becomes a level playing field for everyone and who can perform the best on that day. The Olympics is gonna be held in Chiba, which is a, a, a beach break. It's gonna be in average, probably average conditions. Um, and I'm definitely, I definitely have model models being specifically worked on for for that, um, it, they're just going to be a little bit altered designs from what already these surfers already know as their favourite boards. Um, so yeah, there will be there is something there definitely. I'm going to have probably maybe a few, quite a few athletes there, you know, from most countries. You know, like you got Jeremy Flores, um, you have. Julian Wilson, Sally Fitzgibbon, Hiroto Ahara from Japan. Like, I'm working with all these athletes on fine tuning their equipment. So, um, every time I make them, a, a, say, a batch of board, a batch of boards, it's their feedback's instantaneous, and um, we just keep changing things and making things better and better. At the moment, um, there's. You know, there's access, there's bio resins, the EPS foams. Um, I working with a company at the moment that I know has the potential to break down the majority of the materials that a surfboard's made from, um, and then turn it into uh, use it in other, you know, in other products. That's in its early stages, um, and hopefully that can happen because you know I always want like what happens to all the broken boards <laughs> you know what happens to all the broken boards um, it's not just the boards that you know we're making at the moment it's like where do all the broken boards go and you know what, is, what happens with all these second you know this, it's as surfers we are so conscious about the environment and the oceans and stuff like that and yet here we are dealing with you know using materials that aren't really that use, you know, that environmentally friendly. So um, I know that there's a lot of behind the scenes work going on to change that. So it's hopefully that happens soon. It's always interesting at the start because when there's a new team rider, say let's go Julian Wilson, you haven't made him, you made him a couple of boards and then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, these go all right and then you start. You're making a lot of boards and you're doing a lot of design work, different stuff, especially with Julian, who's such a different surfer to say, Joel Parkinson. Um, Joel Parkinson was pretty easy. Um, even looking at the start, it, it's, it's, it's hard. Um, but once you get a feel for it and that, it becomes, it's, becomes a lot easier. The amount of boards that I remember when I was first making boards for Luke, uh, and or Joel, there might have been 180 or 100 boards a year and like there's eight events or 10 events and you're making batches of eights and tens per event. And now I think I make, you know, like Joel in his last years, I probably made him 30 boards, you know? So it just, at the start, it's, it, it's intense and, and you're working, 
you know, you're getting a feel for each other, you know, a feel for it. Um, but once you develop uh, a style of board that suits that surfer, then it just, it, it's, it's easy. We're a self-funded brand, like I'm the owner, I'm the invest, like I, it's always been me. The other surfboard brands have had outside investments come in and, and that didn't work for them, even though they're still around now, but um, the surfboard industry is pretty resilient, I think. Um, we have been very consistent in the amount of boards that we build year in, year out. Uh, and I think, yeah, we've been pretty resilient to it. The clothing brands have reached levels of, you know, ridiculousness. Um, and now it's all come back down to probably what is, what should be normal, you know, <laughs> I guess. Um, what should be normal. But um, we were, yeah, we, we didn't, I don't know, I, I can only speak on my, on my own company and for, you know, the last 10 years it's been, I make the same amount of boards year in, year out. Um, it, it's actually increased in recent years um, due to this epoxy, you know, making, you know, developing new technology. So we actually have increased, our brand has increased and the brand awareness has increased. So yeah, we've been, we're all right. My wife and I are uh, traveling through Europe um, for the next month, and but I do have I'm, I'm releasing the 2020 range uh, in Hossegore, and I have all our distributors um, from all over Europe coming to Hossegore to to look at the new models that I'm launching next year, um, and when Paulo uh, heard that who owns the 58 stores. Um, when he heard that I was gonna be in Hossegore, he said, can you please come and, and uh, say hello? See, it's all secret. No, 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 no. It's, um, it's just the stuff that I've been working on with all the athletes heading into the Olympics. Um, I, I bought my, I, I obviously shaped them, shaped myself some boards. Um, I've been surfing them around here and, it goes really good so the new collection will just I take let's say DNA from you know the best boards from the best athletes and and I start making some little alterations based on comments from them or what they want to do and and even my own surfing and how I want a board to go and feel and perform and and um, yeah there, there's a two just some little variations on, on, on some really popular boards that I make. Andy always thought that my other team riders boards were better than his, even though they weren't, but Andy was that kind of guy who would pick up um, his brother's boards, Bruce, or he'd pick up Joel's boards and he'd go, whoa, these, board, these boards are way better than mine. Joel, Joel and, and Andy and myself were surfing um, these perfect little waves at Greenmount. And he obviously thought that I might have been surfing okay, because he, he was watching me surf, and he went, give me that board. And um, he jumped on it and rode it, and then he took, he went, I'm taking it. And he took those that board to events. He actually won an event on that. And then, um, and I called it the confusion model, because Andy, Andy, Andy was always, I always felt that or Andy was always confused, meaning that he always thought something was better than what he had, and uh, Andy Irons' model was called the confusion. Yeah. <laughs>